that what we speak is what we eat, what we eat is what we become. If you're speaking nonsense, it's a good day to stop. Amen? You speak nonsense, you become nonsense. And that is, uh, it's not good for you, man. It's not good for you, it's not good for those around you. Um, today we're going to talk about stepping into your call. All right, and what, what does that mean? What is our call? We know and we've learned here that our first call is to be a servant to the Lord. We know that we are called to serve the Lord. We are called to serve the kingdom. We are called to serve one another. Um, and we know that that's not always an easy task. Um, Jesus was the ultimate example of a servant. In everything, he served others. In everything, he gave to others. In everything, he denied himself. He went through the hard times. He went through the pain. He went through the suffering. He kept his mouth closed when he had to. He went to the Father when he had to, and he served, and he blessed people. The Word says we're called to imitate him. That is our first and foremost priority when we come into the kingdom is to be a minister to the Lord. We know that that's our first position that we're supposed to fulfill. And it's a continuance as we continue in our walk. We must continue to fulfill that position of being a priest to the Lord. Amen? Let's go to John 13, 1 through 7. First and foremost, I just want to let everybody know that um, this teaching is for each and every one of us. Unless you are Jesus, this is for you. Amen? So when you hear things and when I hear things and when I'm writing these things down, the first thing I'm looking at is, geez, Lord, <laughs> I need to tighten up. And that's the first thing that we all need to be looking at is, Lord, where can I tighten up? Where can I manifest more of you? Because I know that I'm an imperfect person. I know that I make mistakes. I know that I fall short. Every one of us is in that place. It's not a place to get offended. Um, the Word tells us this. Till we go home, we're going to get pruned. We're going to be counsel corrected and directed. Um, and if you can't take counsel, correction, and direction for yourself, you'll never be able to give counsel, correction, and direction to anybody else, which means you'll never be able to fulfill your call as being a true servant. Amen? So John 13, verse 1 through 7, if I can finally get there. This to me is uh, an ultimate outline of what a servant is. This is Jesus. Um, and we know that we can never get a better example than Jesus for anything. So hallelujah, let's read it along. It says, starting in verse 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And I just want to stop there for a minute. So basically what this saying is, is he knew... He was going to be betrayed by somebody who was supposed to be a devoted and faithful follower of him. He never loved him any less. He still served him. He still loved him. He was still there for him. So that is lesson number one. No matter what anybody does to you, no matter what anybody says to you, no matter what they put you through, you are to serve them and love them. We do not overcome evil with evil, but we overcome evil with good. Amen? Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Like shocked out of his mind, like, I can't believe you're washing my feet. We should be washing your feet. And Jesus answered and said to him, what am I doing? What am I doing? You do not understand now, but you will know after this. You know, what Jesus was saying there was, how can I expect you to do something without me first doing it? 
If I don't set the example, how do I expect you to be the example? Amen? So we know that everything Jesus has asked us to do, he's already done it. He is led by example. He has seen it all the way through. So we are called to imitate that. It says, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. <laughs> I'll take it all. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him, therefore he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. No, when I, when I first read that, I was, no, I don't want to say the first time I read it, but um, there was like this mind-blowing revelation and the power of God's love in this verse and how much he sacrificed and gave to us. Um, you know, one of the questions that we can come up with is why is there so much fulfillment in serving? It's because when you truly serve with everything you have, you worship with everything you have. So you're filled with everything he has. So you're constantly fulfilled and serving because your serving comes from his presence. And the more you worship and are in his presence, the more you're fulfilled. Amen. So let's go to Psalms 100. We're going to read a few Psalms and just kind of go through, you know, the whole area of cleansing and being filled with him so that we're actually able to serve. If you're not filled with his presence, you can't serve. Everything you do is in vain. Without him, it's nothing. Amen? Psalms 100. We know that a true servant, somebody who desires to do the will of the Father, somebody that desires to be pleasing to the Father and fulfill his priesthood, worships with everything they have at all times. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Praise and worship doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be singing a song. You can praise and worship in how you clean. You can praise and worship in how you um, conduct yourself in front of other people. You can praise and worship in how you grocery shop. You can praise and worship in everything you do. You give glory to the Father and you bless Him in everything you do. You are worshiping Him. How you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you talk, how you act is either worship to Him or worship to the enemy. Amen? So Psalms 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Oh, I missed a part. It says, be thankful to him and bless his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 134. Psalm 134, 1 says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O, his ser o the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, 
who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. So, if it's not obvious in what the Word is saying, we have got to come in here and praise the Lord. We have to bless Him with everything we have. If you want to be able to bless Him outside of assembling, you must start first by blessing Him in assembly. This is where you get filled. This is where His presence overtakes you. This is where you get so much of Him that you're able to go out into an evil world and continue to pour Him out. If you're not sowing in the Spirit here, if you're not sowing in the Spirit in the war room and in the places where you're called to worship, you will not sow in the Spirit out there in the world. And you will be an unfaithful servant. You will not be ready to give what you're supposed to give to individuals that you encounter. Um, a lot of times, you don't even know the individuals that you're supposed to encounter because the only thing they see of you is your conduct and how you carry yourself. You may never talk to 30 people that end up getting saved because of you. It's because of what they saw in you. It's because of what they saw you do, what they saw you say, or what they didn't see you do or say. You must carry yourself in the conduct of the Spirit of God, and the only way to do that is to be a servant to Him first. That is your, that is your strongest and most precious gift you can give to Him, is to praise Him, to honor Him, to bless Him with your mouth. And when you do that with your mouth, you speak it, you believe it, you receive it, then you walk in it. And you're able to manifest it to those that are out there in need. Without praise and worship, without severing yourself from yourself, you will never be able to be a true servant of the kingdom of God. Amen? Everything will be works of yourself, which are not accounted for. Um, let's see here. Hallelujah. So, your desire to serve comes from your connection to God's presence. The level of your desire to serve is based on the level of your connection to God's presence. You will either serve wholeheartedly and full of joy, or you will be a distraction and a stumbling block. Let's go to Matthew 24, 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Everybody, let's speak it. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find doing so, or find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A major question we've got to constantly be asking ourselves is what are we manifesting? What are people learning from us? If you are manifesting if you are not manifesting the power of deliverance, why should people around you desire to serve and be delivered? Amen. This is an area where we have to always be searching out how we are carrying ourselves. Are we doing the work that we're supposed to be doing? Are we maintaining our walk in Christ? Are we maintaining purity? Are we keeping our hands clean? Are we keeping what we're looking at on clean things? Or are we straying away and looking at things that we shouldn't be looking? Every little thing you do, brings a little contamination at a time, which slowly causes you to drift away from walking and being a faithful servant. And I'm telling you right now, you might not see it, but everybody around you sees it, and they know it. And you can go from having an amazing witness and character of Christ to someone who has slowly drifted away, and people start saying, that person's not the same anymore. I don't want what they have. In this place, in this house, we know that we go through a deliverance process. We go through um, you know, the whole routine. We get completely filled, dressed, and possessed. We get delivered from every demon in hell that has infiltrated our lives through all of our years. 
we get delivered, we continue in our walk, we have younger brothers and sisters that come in that need deliverance. How are they supposed to desire to be delivered and think that they're going to walk free if they know you got delivered and you still walk like a heathen? You still react in the flesh all the time. You still act like an idiot. And I'm not saying we're perfect, but my goodness, man, I'm telling you, some of the things that believers do these days that are proclaimed Christians, filled with the Spirit of God, dressed and possessed, praying in tongues and doing all kinds of stuff, they have the most terrible witness of deliverance and freedom ever, which causes people to walk away. And the Word says that if you're a stumbling block to one of these babies, you might as well tie a millstone around your neck and jump off a boat in the ocean and drown. doesn't say drown, but that's what's going to happen. Jump off the boat with a millstone tied to your neck, you're going to drown. So we have got to take that stuff seriously. Your deliverance just isn't about you. Your deliverance is about those babies that are coming up under you. You've been called to this place to rescue souls. Starting with your soul, but then as a true servant of the king, as you're ministering to him, you're blessing him, he's delivering you. Now you're used as a vessel of honor to bring deliverance and healing to those that are coming up behind you. And far be it that you blow it with that, man. We've got to take it serious. We've got to start pulling our big boy pants up and doing the work that it takes to fight the good fight and rescue other people and stop being so stinking selfish. Amen? So we know that if they don't see freedom and deliverance in you, they don't want what you have. They don't want it. They don't think it really exists. Because if, if you're the representation of deliverance, you're the representation of what's supposed to be delivered from all the demons and free, and they're still seeing demons, like, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. So we've got to start taking it serious. We've got to start taking what we're doing seriously. Amen? All right, let's go to John 13, verse 34. new commandment I give to you, that you love one another or serve one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, we, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another or you truly serve one another. Without God's presence, we are nothing. And people can see the difference between those that are connected and those that are not connected to the presence of God. People know it. They know whether you're connected or you're disconnected. And listen, nobody here is perfect. You know, we started this thing off letting everybody know I'm not perfect. None of you guys are perfect. Jesus fulfilled the role of perfection. All we can do is give our all to strive to be perfect every day. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but you're going to do your best to be perfect in him. Amen. So we know that we fall short. We're not religious. We know people make mistakes. But there's a difference of mistakes that are, you know, a mistake. And then there's a difference of willful sin. People that are happy with talking bad. People that are continuously engaged in foul and unclean conversation. That are touching unclean things. That are doing things they know they shouldn't be doing. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. I make mistakes every day. I have to get before the Lord. I have to repent. If I make a mistake towards somebody, I have to go to that person. I have to apologize, and I have to repent for that. And then I have to make sure that I don't go to that person and keep apologizing and repenting for the same thing over and over and over again. But we have to pay attention. We have to focus on what we're supposed to be doing, and we have to make sure that we are being a good witness and a leader to those that are around us. There are people around us all the time that are watching everything. And we will either lead them to Christ or away from Christ through the way we serve Him. You know, there's a lot of people that serve. They do a lot of things. They do a lot of works. Um, but they're not truly a, a witness of His character. Works do not get you home. They do not get you home. Proverbs 11, verse 9.
So we know that the Word says what we just read, that people will know you are Jesus' disciples by the way you love them and you serve them. Amen? So one of the main things that disqualify us from being a, a, a true, faithful, and righteous servant of the Lord is our mouth, the things we speak, the things we talk about, the things that we, uh, we agree with. Proverbs 11, 9. Let's read it together. It says, The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. If what you are speaking is contaminating yourself and those around you, you are not a true and righteous servant of the kingdom. The words that come out of your mouth either worship God or they worship Satan. There is no in-between. No in-between whatsoever. All right? So we've got to be mindful of what we are doing. And listen, this all goes back to your connection with the throne room of God. All right? You cannot do these things. You cannot bridle your tongue. You cannot make sure you're walking in a clean and righteous conduct if you are not worshiping him with everything you have if you are not a faithful chaser of his presence if you are not a true seeker of who he is and what he is in you and through you and the way you do that is through worship you worship 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 you come in this place like i said before whether you like the song or not you better worship harder in that song because it's not about us it's about him and the only way to get cleansed, the only way to get healed and freed and delivered from all the nonsense is for him to be in you more than you were in you. And the only way for that to happen is for that beautiful exchange to take place in this place. Every time you go to the war room, every time you come into service, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, give it your all no matter what you dealt with, no matter what you went through, no matter who did what to you, no matter how you feel, you give it your all because it's a matter of life and death. Today you could be here, tomorrow you might not be. And there are plenty that were here one day and gone the next, and they're gone. They're out there running the streets doing dope. They're, they're back in prison. They're, some of them are dead. This is not a game. The devil is not playing games. We are given a choice every single day to bless the Lord with everything we have or to bless the devil. If you're not blessing the Lord, you're blessing the devil. You may not think it. You may not believe it. But I'm telling you right now, you continue in that way, you're going to slowly drift away. And you're going to get to a place and wonder, how the heck did I get here? Take it serious. It's not a game. We didn't play games out there on the streets. We cannot play games in here. The kingdom of God is more real than what's going on out there. The principles of the kingdom are more real than what's going on out there. And if you can't abide by those principles, out there will eat you up. Amen? Philippians 2. God is in control. He's on the move, and we have got to be his hand. We have got to help in these times when so many are in need of knowing who he is. And there's a time for the church to stop being the hypocrite, the scribes and the Pharisees that nobody could stand, nobody wanted anything to do with, nobody wanted to be like them at all because they were not of God. They were not of Jesus. They were not representations of freedom and deliverance and healing and the power of the Holy Spirit. They were not. They were the opposite of what people wanted to be. So we have to be Jesus in these times. We have to strive and work hard to imitate him and his character. Philippians 2, starting at verse 14. Go 14 through 16. And this is phenomenal. I mean, this is, this is an area where we all have to make sure that we are staying faithful. We all have to make sure that we are um, walking a good character, being a good witness. Because the devil is always out there trying to poke and provoke you and cause you to sow in the flesh and to speak seeds of corruption to other individuals. And I'm telling you right now, you can sow, 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 sow. You can give and serve and serve and serve. 
Um, but if you're sowing in the flesh while you're serving, your service is for nothing. I don't care if you served 20 years. If you grumbled and complained the whole stinking time and you had nothing but bad things to say and you slandered individuals and talked bad about this and talked bad about that, but you sowed and did great works for 20 years, it counts for nothing. Nothing. Verse 14. Let's read it. It says, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights, or you should shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Grumbling, complaining, backbiting, gossiping, slandering, and bad attitudes nullify your service. All of these are fruits of a hypocrite and caused by a lack of connection to God's presence, and your service is in vain. You will not receive a full reward, and you will not be fulfilled, and everyone around you will know it. Everybody knows when there's somebody who does not have the joy of the Lord. You can tell, you can see it, how they talk, how they walk, how they act. They're always bound up. I don't care if they go to church 30 times, they've, they've been serving for years and years and years, whatever, bound up. It is our responsibility to maintain our joy. I cannot point at anybody and say, because of the way they acted, I act like this. I can't do it. I cannot point blame at anybody. I am accountable for how I carry myself. I don't care if all hell is breaking loose around me and everybody is a complete psychopath and idiot. I have to maintain my joy in that circumstance. I'm accountable for that. Doesn't matter what this person's doing, doesn't matter what that person's done, doesn't matter how many years anybody's done this or that or whatever, you have to seek the Lord more and more and more and more to be able to maintain your joy and walk in the conduct and character of a true servant of the Lord. You're responsible. Amen? Matthew 7, 21. And now, I know that we have heard this probably, I don't know, I can't even number it. And I know the reason why so many scriptures are used a lot is because they are vital. They're vitally important. You know, there's a, there's a repetition in the program, okay? There's, there's things that you need to do. There's things that you need to hear over and over and over and over and over again so that there is a washing of your spirit, soul, and body so that the new can actually come, come forth and bear fruit for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so we worship all the time. We warfare all the time. We have prayer all the time. There's a lot of scriptures we use all the time because they are vital. They are vital to grab a hold of. They're vital to live. And they're vital not only for your success and for your growth in the kingdom, but for other people around you. Same thing with the worship songs, man. You know, each and every one of us has worship songs that they are songs of deliverance. You know, there are certain songs where you know they come on and it's just like, boom. Thank you, Jesus. It's all gone now. But there are songs that, for everybody, that aren't, they're not like that. It's just not the song that gets you to that place. But I'm telling you right now, it's not about a feeling. Those songs that you think don't get you to that place, they are fighting on your behalf when you don't even know it. So if you see a song come up there and you don't worship that song because you're like, eh, this is all right, I've heard it 50,000 times, uh, whatever, you better turn it around today. Because I'm telling you right now, what you sow today is rescuing your butt tomorrow. You may not feel it right then, but tomorrow you're going to be like, man, I missed that one. And it'll get to a place where you do it long enough, you won't even realize that you missed it. You'll just be walking bound up all the time because you're constantly getting smacked in the face by the devil's traps because you're not sowing in the spirit like you're supposed to. 
Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is something that everybody needs to write down. All right? You will not be judged according to your service, but in the manner of which you served. You will not be judged according to your service, but in the manner of which you served. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody grab a hold of what that means? That means you can sow, you can serve, you can bind and loose demons, you can pray, you can warfare, you can lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. But if your first and foremost priority is not to be a servant to the king of kings, you did it all for nothing. And while you're doing all those things, you're over here backbiting, slandering, gossiping, being a terrible witness, um, talking bad about ministries, talking bad about this person, judging, pointing fingers. That's what you're going to be judged on. Amen? Take it serious. This is, this is the real deal. We need to start taking this stuff serious because it's vital. The enemy is disqualifying people from their inheritance on technicalities because people are not mindful of the things of the kingdom the way they should be. They're letting little things in. They're allowing little things. They're thinking that their works are going to save them, and they are not. They're not going to do it. So if you have a position, you have to do everything that you need to do to stay filled to fulfill that position in a righteous manner. Just because you fulfill that position, if it's not done in a righteous manner, it counts for nothing. Period. So we have to be very diligent to maintain our walk, stop pointing fingers, make sure that we're maintaining this temple here, because if you can't maintain this temple, you can't maintain the temple of God the house of God, the people of God, the positions of the kingdom. Amen? We have to cleanse this house in order for a helping to cleanse other people's houses. So God is looking at your heart, your motives, your desires, your intentions, your words, not your works. Amen? If your heart is on Him, your motives are clean and pure with Him, your desires are of Him, your intentions are on Him, your words are of Him, your works will be fruitful. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 23, I think it is, real quick. bottom line is it, it talks about the scribes and the Pharisees and he says woe to you hypocrites scribes and Pharisees you wash the outside you wash the outside of the cup but the inside is filthy we must first start with the inside and then move to the outside amen you cannot cleanse the outside and walk around thinking you're doing all this wonderful stuff but inside you're rotting away Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. First clean the inside, or this is blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. So you clean the inside, then what you do outside is fruitful. Mark 9, verse 43. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter in life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame 
rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with an eye, with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now we all know that this doesn't mean chop your hands, feet, and your eye, pull your eye out. We know that, right? What it's talking about is, is if you know there is something that is contaminating you, you better cut it off. You know what's right and wrong. You know the places you should go, you shouldn't go. You know the things you should touch, you shouldn't touch. You know the things you should be looking at and the things you shouldn't be looking at. So if one of those is causing you to sin or it is distracting you or it is pulling you away from your first call, which is to be a servant unto the Lord, anything that brings contamination to fulfilling your priesthood, being a servant to the Lord, must be severed and cut off. Amen? It says a true and faithful servant always self-examines and is willing to do whatever it takes to stay in divine position. Denial of self is vital. That means whatever you want to do, stop doing it. And do what he wants you to do. Amen? It, it has to be, it's plain and simple. It's not hard stuff. It's not rocket science we're working with here. It's plain and simple. It's, it's easy, um, biblical standpoints that we can all live by. It's not like you have to be some guy who graduated Harvard to be able to discern all this stuff. You come, you worship, you praise the Lord, and somebody who's never passed kindergarten can be the most discerning, wise individual you ever met in your life because the kingdom is not about what the world's about. Amen? So take the time. Look at it. Pay attention to it and put it to practice. The problem is, is we're just lazy. We're lazy. We're selfish. We want to do what we want to do. And I'm telling you right now, there is no more fulfillment you will ever, ever, ever have in your life than being in that place where you know you're serving him with everything you have. You know you're serving everybody else around you with everything you have. You know that you're giving your all to the kingdom. You will be more fulfilled than you've ever been. Everything you need will be provided because of your heart to serve. Those are kingdom principles. God will not let you down on those principles. That is the bottom line. The problem most people have is they serve themselves and then they're bound up all the time because the way they serve themselves didn't pan out the way they hoped. You serve others first. You serve the kingdom first. You serve him first. And I'm telling you right now, everything will fall into line. And I've watched it happen in my life. I've made many, 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 many mistakes. Many mistakes. But I have watched putting kingdom principle into practice Step by step by step by step by step, God rebuild in my life. And it's been the most mind-blowing experience that I could ever explain to anybody. And we hope that everybody is in that same position to where God just keeps restoring, keeps restoring, keeps restoring, keeps blessing, keeps blessing, keeps blessing. But it does not come overnight, and it doesn't come to the lazy. you got to put the work in. Amen? You've got to seek after him with everything you have. John 12, starting at verse 23. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and, it, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. The opposite of service is selfishness, and many times the reason why people aren't blessed is because they're stinking selfish, and that's... um. You know, we've, we've lived our whole lives thinking about nothing but what we can get. And for a lot of people, it's hard to break out of that. I know that's one of the battles that I had for a long time was putting others above myself. You know, thinking of other people's needs before my own. Um, and there's a lot of emotion that goes into selfishness. There's a lot of feeling and there's all kinds of excuses that can cause an individual to be selfish. But that's where 
you come to a place of denying yourself and how you feel. And it says specifically, and we know this with, with growing in general, that a seed does not grow until it dies, and then it produces much grain. So in order to be fulfilled, in order to be blessed with every spiritual blessing, you must die to yourself. You must surrender and submit to authority. You must surrender and submit the things that you want to do. Cut the ties with a man and dive into the kingdom. And I'm telling you, the things that you want, they stink anyway. They're not even really that great compared to what God is going to bless you with. We have no idea. We can't even grab a hold of what God really wants to give us. We're too busy caught up in our own mind and what we think we need or what we think we want or what the world tells us we need and what success is and all this other nonsense. We don't even understand the true capabilities of God most of the time and what he can do and what he can bring and how he can bless. We're too busy bringing stuff to ourselves. When you serve to fulfill other people's needs, God always meets your needs. When we are selfish and meet our own needs, we end up in debt. Bottom line, whether it be financial, um, whether it be you reap, and now you have a debt to pay. You sow it in the flesh, you sow it into something that you shouldn't have, and now you're reaping for it. So one way or another, you serve yourself, you end up in debt. So let's stay debt free. Amen. Serve the Lord. Chase after him with everything you have. Bless your brothers and sisters no matter what. The word says bless those who curse you. So if they're cursing you, praise God, bless them more. If they're giving you a hard time, bless them more. Believe me, you're giving somebody else a hard time too. We all have to deal with each other. Amen? There's nobody here that is just the most sweet and wonderful person to be around all the time. So don't be deceived. You are not Jesus sitting on high. Amen? You have stinkiness just like everybody else has stinkiness. You need to fan your own stinkiness away and stop worrying about other people's. You bless them. And if you bless them, guess what? You will in turn be blessed because there's going to be somebody out there that you drive nuts that's going to bless you because you reap what you sow. Amen? So these are the things we need to start thinking about. These are the things we need to be mindful of. Do unto others as you want done to you, whether they deserve it or not. And more so to those that don't deserve it because there's something going on with them that God wants to remove from them. He wants to touch them. He wants to love them. They need his love. So those are the ones we need to go after with the love, with the respect, with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with giving more to them, not destroying them. There's obviously something going on, so if you attack them and antagonize them, you're just going to make it worse. And you're going to make it worse for you because now you have to reap corruption because you sowed corruption. Amen? Where are we at? Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. When you truly have a servant's heart, you are always fulfilled by serving others' needs over your own. 
when you are denying yourself, God meets your needs. And again, the opposite of service is selfishness. You know, it talks a lot in this about um, forgetting about what you need, forgetting about what you want, not just thinking about your own interests, but thinking of the interests of others. What better way to manifest the character of Christ than to put others' needs, put others' desires, not always their desires because they don't always line up with the kingdom, but to put others' interests above yourself, to be a willing vessel to serve others above yourself as Christ did for us. I want to close it. Second John 1. In doing that, it takes a lot of humility. One of the main ways you can serve Jesus and actually get to a place where he trusts you and continues to pour himself into you more and more and more is through obedience. If you can't obey, you can't serve. You know, one of the biggest things that, that people have to learn is before you can lead, you have to learn to follow first. If you can't be a good follower, you cannot be a good leader. And the other thing we have to learn is when we talk about leadership, you know, people want positions and they want to be moved up and whatever. The thing you have to understand is everybody is leading somebody in some direction. Doesn't matter how low you are, doesn't matter how high you are, doesn't matter if you're a pastor, doesn't matter if you're just coming into the program, doesn't matter. Everybody is leading somebody somewhere every day. You're either leading people to Christ or you're leading people to the enemy in the things you do, the things you talk about, and the way you carry yourself. You're leading people in the way you worship or the way you don't worship. And th those are things we have to pay attention to. It doesn't matter. Pastor's not the only one leading people here. The way you do stuff and the way you do stuff and the way you do stuff and the way I do stuff is either leading people towards the kingdom of heaven or it's leading people away from the kingdom of heaven. So we have to stop looking at the worldly standpoint of leadership is a position or it's uh, you've been given this position. You are now like in the construction world. You are now a foreman or you are now assistant superintendent or you are now a superintendent. Before I was moved up in any position in my job, I was first that position. I fulfilled that position before I was put in that position. Amen? And that's what we're called to do. We must fulfill the position of a true and faithful servant of the Lord before we are actually qualified and put in that position. That means it doesn't matter what you have going on. It doesn't matter what you've touched and agreed with in the past. You go after them with everything. You don't let the devil tell you you're not good enough. You made a mistake. You've done this. You've done that. You've done that. You worship him with everything. You go after him with everything. Amen? Second John 1. So I, know, I, I looked this up because it's talking about a lady, and I, I looked it up to see, you know, who this lady was. And there were two references. It was um, a woman or a relative of one of the servants or one of the, um, the people that were um, like a leader for Christ. And it was also a representation of the church. Um, so we know for us, it's a representation of the church. And it could be talking about some of these ladies, but it's a representation of the church. Amen. So, hallelujah. The elder to the elect lady, his church, total freedom, true ministries, the body of Christ, and her children, each and every one of us, we're all God's children. People in the body of Christ are all God's children. Whom I love in truth and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth. Because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. I rejoice greatly that I, that I have found some of your children walking in the truth as we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, church, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which, we have, that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another or serve one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, 
who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but, but that we may receive a full reward. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah, Father. We love you and bless you. We plead the blood of Jesus over your word that has gone forth today, Lord. We ask that it grow and bear fruit for your glory, Lord. We ask that you bring conviction in every area, Lord, that is not, that is causing us to not seek you the way we're supposed to seek you, that is causing us to not be the servant or the, or the witness that you've called us to be, Lord. We repent for every area that we've come into false agreement with the Father. Anything that's blocked the move of your spirit, we repent for it right now in the name of Jesus. And we know that our hearts have been clean today, that the old has been severed, and that we're stepping into the new right now. So we just commit our lives into your hands. We rededicate our walk to you, Father. We love you and we bless you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Prepare to